Sunday morning. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome no, to no. news, views, and interviews on WROWAM 590, FM 101.5, B95.5. Aaron Mayer and Joe Condon and a very patient Teresa McCallman, who is a Senate candidate for the 46th Senate District, which is Saratoga, Schenectady, and Rensselaer Counties, and you are running as a Democrat. Good That's morning. Right. Nice to have you with us. I, I thought, you know. Thanks, Joe. That was so funny. You know, you know I'm sitting over I'm, I'm Joe made me spill my coffee this morning. You know, Teresa, I'm, I'm sitting over here thinking that he's going to bring out, break out in the song, Ooh, yes, child, yes. things are going to get easier. Because, I mean, this is a new district and everything. Yes, yes. And he totally went, ooh, ooh, ooh. That was like Arnold Horshack or, you know, uh, or, Joe, were you at the Bronx Zoo again? Um, <laughs> little, little, little inside joke here. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you have to be here. Well, Teresa, uh, you know, again, we're glad to have you back. You, you know, you have been one of the progressive voices in the capital region, pushing for change yes. and shaking things up. Yes. You know, you came in with a heartbeat of almost becoming the mayor of Schenectady. You've yes. transformed the landscape. And, uh, and, you know, we're here this morning because this, you know, normally, you know, when you're out running, you have... Uh, the furious five daughters, four, three daughters, right? Three daughters, three daughters. one yeah. son. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm a, you, you all, You're giving all, me more kids. All, all, all the kids together, plus you are the furious five, you know? Yes, but yes. I mean, the thing is, is that you know, you're doing a fabulous job. I, I, they're just a joy to talk with. I mean, because when you have such brilliant children who are really know the issues and really yes. know the community because you know a lot of times mom or dad's running for office and oh, the kids are so over it and the kids are all out of it yeah. but your kids really care about what's happening in the capital they region and in Skanky. so you're doing a number of cool things plus on education i mean on a number of issues yes and we cannot have enough people who are out in the field that just know their stuff, you know, not just not just a party rubber stamp or somebody's running on mom yeah. or dad's name, you know, and, um, you know, but right now something different because really a little backstory because I know that they created an extra sense, a seat for the Senate in the last yes. decennial census. Mm -hmm. This was so that George Amador could have a safe yes. seat and he yes. barely, you know, he barely held on to it. And uh, and then he you know he he and went on he, to the pasture because uh, uh, a Hinchy mm -hmm. uh, decided Michelle, to run. Who that's my girl. you know she yeah. had she has family name and recognition because of her mm -hmm. dad, and so I think he knew that well you know the jig is up mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and he did you know if if it's given to me you know I'll take it but if I have to work for, for it, it I'm going to yep. go out on vacation. Yep. But you're going to go out. This is a brand new district. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this district that you're running for, New York State Senate, mm -hmm. and the geographies and the communities. So uh, the 46th Senate district, brand new. Mm -hmm. um, you know, before I ran in the 49th against Joe. Uh, Joe. Sorry, Not Joe. Joe. Not you, Joe. <laughs> Joe to Disco. Jim. <laughs> no, I would never do that G to you, Joe. G-Y-M to Disco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jim to Disco, mm -hmm. um, and that was a hard fight because it was predominantly, well, it was heavily rep Republican. Right. So now we've got this 46th Senate district. Brand but you made him sweat. You know, he, yeah. you know, he was, he, you know. He, of course, you, you, I made them all work. There you go. We'll there you go. Those, those men, those men get out there. They think they own the district and own the court. He was, you know, Jim, Jim was, a, you know, one time, you know, decent basketball player, but mm -hmm. his knees are not working <laughs> like they used to. But, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go, like go on, as you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, um, so um, I I lost the general. I won my primary by 73% right. against right. the in, uh, Democratic-endorsed candidate. And uh, when this came around, I said, well, obviously, you know, I would be an idiot not to run to make sure that I'm still pushing forward the, the voices of the community. Right, right. So the 46th Senate District um, has parts of Saratoga, so mm -hmm. Saratoga Springs. Mm -hmm. um, that's Wilton. We've got Milton. We've got, oh, my gosh. Um, Half Moon, we mm -hmm. got Boston Spa, we come down to... That includes Saratoga Battlefield, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, totally no, no, awesome. No, actually, I, think, I don't think that's included. Oh, dang. I'm going to have to check. Yeah, that's because that'd be beautiful to have that little piece of history. Oh, I know. I just passed it, actually. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday, we were driving to Half Moon to do a mm -hmm. petition drive. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we have Half Moon, too. We have... Um, Coming down to Schenectady County, we've got Clifton Park, mm -hmm. Escayuna, the whole entire city of Schenectady. Mm -hmm. And then we come down to Waterford. Oh, we mm -hmm. also have um, Lansingburg in there mm -hmm. and the entire city of Troy. Mm -hmm. So, well, so you have all of Schenectady and all of Troy? Yes. 
So that's pretty cool. I know, right? So that makes us a very uh, heavily Democratic and very diverse district. Exactly. And I was... um, So you go from really like rural communities to, you know, major urban urban, communities. You know, so you got got suburbia, upscale suburbia. Yep. Uh, but you know, so you really have to, you know, you know, you know, speak to all those. And one of the yes. big issues right now is climate and the environment yes. and suburban sprawl. And I can tell now you right gas now, gas prices and the gas electric prices, prices too. You know, well, the it's thing crazy. is, I know that Clifton Park, uh, you know, Grant, my brother Phil Barrett, who's the to the you know the supervisor, and he's a Republican, but he's probably <laughs> one of the best environmentalists. He speaks truth to power yeah. when it comes to yeah. the environment. You know, he may he may go with his party, but I think that we, you know a guy that won on the environment, and I know that the people that they will throw up will be big on burning gas. I think that that's going to be a very, very big, big uh, argument and fight to make. So I just want to say this: I, I am a Democrat, mm-hmm. but I am willing to work with anyone who is going to help us make this a better district for everyone. Exactly. So I don't care if you're Republican. I don't care if you're not affiliated. Exactly. If we it's the agree to work together to make sure that ourselves, our neighbors, our family everyone can mm-hmm. move forward together in the district, then we need to do it. And that's what I'm here for. And I think that one of the good things about electing a strong Democrat, knowing the power that's centered, because I think that what folks fail to look at is they fail to look down the road. Yes. Where is the power of the state? And am I having a representative that's going to be throwing rocks from the sidelines, mm-hmm. or am I going to have a legislator that's actually going to have skin in the game? And, you know, I love Brother Tedesco. He's, he's, you know, he's been a big boost to my daughters, as you know, graduated from yes. Mahonison. Yes. Uh, he always been a great, great, big support of the military, but he really doesn't have any skin in the game other than from the, you know, from the peanut gallery. And that's okay. But you know something, local politics and revenues for the community, you know, you know, are not, for, not best served from the peanut gallery. And you want to definitely be able to, you know, have a voice. Yes. That is, you got Governor Hochul, mm-hmm. okay? So you got a, the first female openly running, which is a very powerful ticket. Mm-hmm. You've got, you know, um, you know the you know the majority leader of the uh, Senate, you know, who is from Westchester County, another female. Yes, and you know, a lot of that, you know, plays into voices at the table, voices that will be heard. And I just think that they're going to probably, hopefully, I'm, I'm going to be lobbying for it, passing the Environmental Bond Act of $6 billion. So that's going to be a lot of money coming yes, for yes. environmental work. And the big mm-hmm. thing between all the districts have in common, especially in the rural areas, is water systems and failing septic. A, yes. lot, of, a lot of Rotterdam and Schenectady are on septic. And, and people Rensselaer don't have County, and Rensselaer County and their they water issues, and they don't you, they don't have the ten thousands of do, tens of thousands of dollars for local families to be granted. That's right. Nor do they have the millions of dollars for the towns. They don't the towns can get them, and they need somebody that's going to be able to go in there and and effectively negotiate that the matching and, funds and, for that, and do it in a way where um, they've had those <laughs> lived experiences, so they can actually say, "Listen, I've lived through this. Mm-hmm. I've experienced this. I have family members who have done it, and they're not just saying." Oh, I know this guy right. that that lived that. No, this happened to me. And out of uh, well, Daphne Jordan, mm-hmm. and I'm going to be in a primary. And the other primary primary candidates, they they cannot say that they have the equal lived experiences right. as I have. Right. Um, and the connections that I have to all parts of the district. Exactly. And being able to speak not only to suburban moms. Right. But also to the urban moms. Exactly. And also to the rural moms. And exactly. families. To our small farmers and our urban farmers. Mm-hmm. To the people who live in the PJs and the ones who just are first time home buyers. Exactly. I've lived all of those experiences. Mm-hmm. I've had the water issues and everything. So I know. And when I go there into the Senate, I can actually say this bill will work for us or mm-hmm. it will not. You know, I had a house over on Putnam Road right across from the Rotterdam Square Mall. And like, again, like Rotter- a lot of Schenectady, uh, you know, Rotterdam is heavily on separate. Yeah, they have s- the few to have the water. But even getting those uh, those that are on regular, you know, town sewer, everybody had to get special tax districts and yeah. everything else. The mm-hmm. burden was always on the back of the mm-hmm. residents mm-hmm. in the community. Mm-hmm. But a developer could go in, get this thing imposed, yeah. but 
the working class and working families had to, to foot the bill. Or we'll push ourselves back and, and you know, have to be like, we'll pay for this. Yeah, it's it's an order, it's all of, all of a sudden a tax on you. Yep. You know, because some guy or gal, their their multi million dollar development company is going to put in you know twenty or thirty homes. And this is not saying I'm anti building, but when it comes at the expense and on the backs of working families that are already struggling, Rotterdam, it's a, granted a suburban community, but it is a working suburban. It's a yeah. working class suburban mm-hmm. community. It's mm-hmm. not, you know, affluent. And you know, and I just think that you know, when you do these things, you know, and they're and they're like spot zoning, mm-hmm. you know, all of a sudden somebody can get all of a sudden, you know, they're all of a, there's there's a thousand an extra thousand dollars assessed on their home. Yeah, I, I and I think also um, when we're thinking about that, and unfortunately Rotterdam is not in the district. I'm mm-hmm. so sorry, guys. I wish you were, uh, but. When we think of that, we, we have to look at passing the New York Health Act. When we do that, a right. lot of that tax burden is going to be alleviated. We'll have more money within our cities and all three parts of the district for infrastructure, and we won't have mm-hmm. to worry about that. But we also need to look at, just like I said when I was running for mayor, when we have these big development companies come in, coming mm-hmm. in, we need to make sure that it benefits the community. And every community doesn't have the same issue. We right. need to make sure that there are benefit packages that are included with whatever deals and that it actually truly benefits whatever community that they're going in. And that takes a lot of laws and different acts and stuff and zoning laws that need to change. Well, one of the things that they do is they get these little pilot agreements and, and they get these pay one time mm-hmm. and then they'll, you know, mm-hmm, and in five mm-hmm. years, it, you know, the community, it's always been the pick and the poke. I always tell people, you know, Grant Rotterdam's not in the, in the community in your, in your district, but it's a beautiful example. Yes, it because is. Rotterdam Square Mall, when it was built, it destroyed wetlands, it destroyed the ecosystem, it tore down the Campbell Mansion, which had actually slave quarters yep. at the bottom, yep. so you lost Everything. historic infrastructure. Yep. And people warned them, saying, this is not going to be, you know, well, look, we got to get this commercial <laughs> in here, and we're going to pick this up at the next half. Joe? News Views interview Sunday morning, first day of spring, Aaron Mary Joe Cotta. Delighted to have with us this morning Teresa McCallman, Senate candidate for the 46th Senate District. We're going to be back in a moment. Sunday morning, first day of spring. Boing. Welcome back to News, Views, and Interviews. That was a bad imitation of a spring, Aaron Mayor. That's Boing. Right. <laughs> Much better. Boing. <laughs> <laughs> Still with us, and she hasn't run out of the studio, <laughs> is Teresa McCallman, who was a Senate candidate for the 46th Senate District, running as a Democrat. Nice to have you back, Teresa. Well, I mean, she always has. I mean, That's you right. know, always. and and you got the Working Families Party and and a number of the big progressive lines. I mean, so you you really got the heat. Before we went into break, I was really kind of pointing out we were talking about tax breaks to mm-hmm. big businesses that you know right at the in the what I call the witching hour mm-hmm. of when they're supposed to kick into really contributing to the community. Mm-hmm. They don't survive past that seven year yep. t- or ten year window. Mm-hmm. It's usually right that seven year, ten year when all of a sudden. Things start going bad financially. But meanwhile, the impact on the communities, the infrastructure, all that they gave up in the school districts, you know, I mean, they come and they promise a lot of things. But in reality, the capital region, you know, has really given more than what it really should have been got, getting from private sector. And it's really, they come and they make a lot of money. Let's be clear about that. Yeah. It's not like they, they, they don't make money, but literally... They're here for the tax breaks and benefits, and once those tax breaks expire, they're out. How do we, as legislators, start to really say, listen, you know, this model financially has often been a bad deal or a broken deal for our capital. You can go to downtown uh, uh, Amsterdam. The mall is closed. Oh, my gosh, yes. You go to downtown now, you know, Rotterdam. The malls, all this infrastructure is gone And yet the community now has to pay for what I call the mothballing of its business. Because first of all, when malls come in, they kill all your local businesses. Mm -hmm. And then once they make their killing on the tax credits and tax rate breaks, they're out the door. And then you're you're at catch, catch, can Mm -hmm. and trying to keep these places proper. How do we bring back Main Street? How do we bring back downtown, the mom and pop shop? That's what I love about downtown Schenectady, what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I give the mayor the props in that. You know, they're doing incentives that actually are bringing back small mom and pop shops. Yeah. So how do you, how do you, as a, a state a state senator, get the incentives to the to communities so they can absolutely truly bring back Main Street? I think this this one word is called co governance. 
Mm -hmm. So you can go in and say to a community, ah, you have, you don't have this and you don't have that. So elect me and I'm going to give you all of these things. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work because you say, I'm going to bring this in. It's going to bring jobs. It's going to do this and do that. And when those things fail, then it they don't work that way. Because right? first of all, you got to worry about the seniority of the senator. Yeah. You got to worry about their connection. Exactly. Can they, you know, you cannot have a district that has a half billion dollars in needs. Yeah. And you're lucky as a senator if you can get $20 million. Yeah. So the thing is this, like we were talking about with Rotterdam and all and with everything, every community has very unique needs. Mm -hmm. You cannot walk into any community in any part of America or in the world and say, oh, I see what the issue is and I'm going to fix it. It's going to fail. Mm -hmm. You have to go to the people, mm -hmm. bring them to the table or bring the table to the people mm -hmm. and say, okay, Tell us what it is that you actually need. What do you think that's going to be more successful in your neighborhood mm -hmm. with your needs, with the people who live here, with mm -hmm. those skill sets, mm -hmm. you know? And then you say, okay, this is these are the jobs or these are the developers that we could bring in. Will this work for you? Mm -hmm. And I know when I ran for mayor, I said this. I said, go to the people and ask them. You wonder why a lot of these stores, a lot of these developments are failing is because mm -hmm. you didn't ask the community if this would work for them. They didn't do the market analysis. No. So you have to go to the people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what made me so successful in my previous runs is that I went to the people and I said, I don't want to tell you what your issues are. Mm -hmm. I need to know what you say your issues are, what your neighbors and you have been complaining about, mm -hmm. yelling at the TV for all these legislators to say, we're going to pass this. And you're like, that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And they don't know it's not going to work because no one ever spoke to you. Right. So simply going to the people and saying what will work and then going back to the Senate mm -hmm. and working with other senators and saying, hey, I know this is an issue in your community as well. Mm -hmm. Why don't we come together and put together some legislation and make sure that we get things done in our community. Amen. But you can't do it without the voice of the people. Exactly. Exactly. Let's go to the Joe for a question. Two of the biggest issues right now are the gas tax oh, in yes. New York State. And it looked like the gas tax was going to be eliminated in New York State. And all of a sudden, at the last minute, it looks like it's not going to be eliminated. <laughs> and the other thing is alcohol to go. It looks like alcohol to go was uh, going to be passed. But at the last minute, it looks like it's not going to be passed. And those are two things that the people want. Your thoughts on those issues? So, yes, gas tax uh, definitely will help. Hello, we, we're at, what, almost $5 a gallon. And it, it hurts. We're coming out of COVID. And we're, we're still suffering some of it, but not as much as we were at the height of COVID. But financially, we cannot afford this. There, I'm struggling to pay for gas. So, yes, we definitely need the gas tax. I, I'll tell you this. Alcohol to go. When the people want alcohol, they want alcohol. You cannot not tell them they can't have the alcohol. We tried that. Remember Prohibition? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I wasn't around then. <laughs> well, I mean, we... we Joe. But Joe's going to get his weed license, though. <laughs> Joe, wants, okay. Joe, Joe wants to be a weed farmer. Anyway, you were saying about alcohol to go, though. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, I think that when we rethink it and we really listen to the voice of the people, that that's going to change as well. Just like with the gas tax, we were, tax, we were like, that's not going to happen. But now we see it actually needs to happen. It's going to benefit the people. We're going to save, what, 7 to $10 per gallon a, a month or something Right, like something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that we're going to we're going to do a reverse on that because I know after COVID and during COVID, I got addicted to and, and I love it. Not alcohol. World? World? <laughs> I got addicted to ordering. Like, oh, food. Oh, you know, OK. To my door. I thought it was a wordle, the Wordle game. Everybody oh, got addicted no, to that. No, I'm not doing stuff. Wordle. I refuse, to, I refuse <laughs> to do that. I love everybody who does it, but I'm not going to do it. My, my OCD would just have me there all day. Mm -hmm. No, but um. Having those things delivered and being having the convenience, like everyone got used to convenience during COVID and not listening to the people saying this is more convenient for us. So I'm ordering my food from my favorite pub or bar and I would like to order my favorite drink to go. And you're going to tell me no. Oh, I not only that, but now it's going to get a, a, a 25 to 35 percent surcharge because I of gas. So. You know, gas, gas, and, gas. You know, that's, uh, you know, yeah. this is the inflationary effect because yeah. <laughs> it's going to be passed on, Greed. Uh, you know, to the inflation. consumer. Oh, well, Greed. you know, well, that's a, well, inflation's a <laughs> real thing. Greed. You know, the <laughs> thing is, people are like, listen, I'm not paying that. The, the, the consumer's going to pay it. You yeah. know, um, you know, I always told folks, I says, you know, when the ch the tar the tariff taxes actually come, which are that's what's really hitting yeah. right now, mm -hmm. driving prices up. Mm -hmm. You know, people are going to be surprised what we really get from China. I tell people, if you love Target, if you love Walmart, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the one of the biggest suppliers of all that cheap stuff 
is China. China. You know, a yes. lot of nuts, a lot of rice, a lot of things that, you know, the BJ, BJ Wholesale with the 500-pound bags of rice, yep. you know, I mean, the, the, you know, stuff that people just got for cheap. Now those surcharges are coming through. People go, it's supply chain. Go, no, the, you know, listen, the, the depots are still, you know, they're at max. They're, <clears throat> you know, the point of the matter is, is that, you know, you cannot hold off price increases, especially if you're cre- increasing on imports. We are heavily dependent upon imports. Yeah. They go, but yeah, we got our own farmers, but yeah, but we don't grow, you know, we're we not, we're, we we're not in the Carolinas know. growing rice like Uncle Ben's, yeah. you know, it's coming from abroad. Yeah. And we're so, industrial. you know, and for a lot of the corn and grains we're producing, we're selling it for ethanol. So we're actually burning food. We're literally burning food, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, yeah. a lot of people don't realize what may felt good under a, le- a bout of nationalism is that, you know, are you willing to pay for it? And that's the thing that people are starting to connect. Unfortunately, the notes, what they call a lag effect, because it takes about three to four years for yeah. it to hit the worker, I mean the and, consumer. And the other thing is this. This is the word on the street from all my uh, working families and my lower income families. Mm-hmm. Every time they get a raise, yeah, it seems like their pockets are being you know, oh, listen! You can do the math. For more. You, you, get you, get, you get a two percent. They, they get a one and a half to two percent raise. State yeah. workers are getting less than two percent of year raises. And then what happens? But the inflation is going up at a rate of seven to eight percent. Exactly. Seven to eight percent. You, you know? can't win for losing. So you, we you, need to have our wages raised in proportionate to inflation. We cannot keep going. That's why I wish I was. Way. I was like you know one of them senior citizens that get the cola because I think I think the cola that's going to hit that's indexed to yeah. inflation. Yeah. Uh, that's going to probably hit about 8%. So, I mean, I think if you're elderly, you're going to get that 8% increase. But what about the rest of us? But, you We're know, not going to be able to live to get But my, my, big, my big thing is <laughs> is that if they've been passing it all onto the working class. One of the biggest sins mm-hmm. was way back when Ronald Reagan did his big tax cut mm-hmm. was that he also boosted the age of retirement. And then he made the federal – you now got to pay federal taxes mm-hmm. on, your reti- on, your, on, your, on your retirement pension mm-hmm. For, mm-hmm. on Social Security. Yep. So you got to pay for taxes on Social, Social Security when you shouldn't be paying the taxes exactly. on it exactly and so that wall street because they get to reclassify their money not as income but you know dividends and all this other stuff and so they reclassify you know i tell them treat everything like welfare because welfare says if you get a potato chip you got to convert it to a dollar value yeah. so they can deduct it from you so why not talk about really having taxes on real income that includes everything from wall street stock returns exactly. everything you know why can't they you know it all be taxed the same way they tax the working class family. And and that's an honest question. And and when I ran the last time and and I talked about when we talked about the UBI, mm-hmm. right? Universal basic income. And right. Andrew Yang. He was like, We should do this and everyone's like, No, we can't do it, we can't afford it and then boom, COVID hits and what happens? Oh well listen, we, we got, got a it. nice little one year of a pilot program for UBI. Right. And it actually worked. But right. if we if we do anything like that, we have to take those subsidies off of those corporations so right. we also need to start increasing taxes on wall street right we well, do we, that. well we actually cut taxes because we used to get some we used to new york state used to get about 12 to 15 billion a year mm-hmm. on 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 what they call uh the, there's like the stock transfer tax mm-hmm. and they got rid of it under uh um, need to take it back. you know and, under george pataki yep. Yep. and i thought you know david patterson would put it back and he didn't, you know. Yep. So, you know, but one of the critical things that you will have an influence on is state tax code and state tax policy. Mm-hmm. It'd be great to, as a state senator, you to raise the voice yeah. on what's income and how we should benefit. I know my good friend Phil Stack is as was working on getting the stock transfer tax um, passed, and I'll be working right along with him to. Make well, sure I'm going to cut you quick because you got 30 <laughs> seconds. Tell us where, when you know when the vote, when the primaries, when the date, real quick. Primary is June 28th. We're now collecting signatures, so if you want us to come and get your signature uh, so that I can get on the ballot, please. 518. 518-387-9871. 518-387-9871. Hope I'll, to hear from you guys. And I want to thank you, Teresa McCallman, for taking time out of your busy day yes. and walking the streets of the 46th Senate District yes. in the state of New York. And to the Grand Dam of Rotterdam, we're coming over for a wonderful cup of coffee, Joe. Our Mary Joe Condon, first day of spring. We've been delighted to have back with us this morning, Teresa, uh, Teresa McCallman, who is the Senate candidate for the 46th Senate District, running as a Democrat. (laughs) That's right.